run. Uh, you can uh, shortly, soon you'll be able to go online to heartlandcafe.com and see all of the races coming up and bike rides this year. Or you can just, kind, if you want more information on Athletes United for Peace, contact info at heartlandcafe.com. Dan Johnson. <laughs> Daniel Johnson. Now, Dan, you got to get real close to that microphone, about a fist yeah, you away. Can't be, fist away? Okay, you, you all right. You can't be us. Relaxing back in the chair there. Well, I got. We have first have to acknowledge Daniel Johnson was uh, first came to our uh, attention when he applied for and got a job at the Heartland. How long ago was that? 10, 11, 12 years ago. Amazing. Oh, you're so grown up now. <laughs> you are. Um, Daniel was always an artist, as, uh, as so many of our employees have been and are. And, he had uh, an art show here. He did indeed. He did indeed. Um, and right now, what's going on is celebrating black history and art ex exhibition right up the street. Tell us... Tell us about it. Uh, thank you, Katie. Thank you, uh, Michael. Um, my name is Dan Johnson. I'm actually co-founder of uh, DNA Art Emporium, which is a online uh, art gallery. Um, the DNA is actually Dan and Alvin, and it's also a metaphor for being self-taught artists, natural taught artists. So it's DNA Art Emporium. Um, we actually have uh, been working on putting this exhibit together for about the last few years, um, and so we finally got an opportunity this year uh, working with uh, Andy Del. Rosa, yes. uh, who actually was great enough to actually uh, lend us his space. And he's the guy who has all these great sculptures all Sculpture over garden. the neighborhood here. That's correct. Uh, also, we'd like to also give thanks to a lot of the local businesses who also uh, took interest and also take it, took out uh, ad spaces within our uh, guide uh, for the actual exhibit. Okay. All right. This will be actually taking place um, February 6th is the opening exhibit, uh, and it'll go all the way through till February 26th. Uh, and we also have two uh, receptions set for February 10th, as well as February uh, 20, uh, 17th, I'm sorry, uh, which me and Alvin will actually be on site uh, to answer questions, uh, to talk to the people. Uh, we're also going to be doing some orations uh, and maybe a couple of monologues. That's terrific. Yeah. We we'll love that here right, in the Glenwood. I'm not going to do a monologue. I'm going to leave that say, to Alvin. I was going to say, you ready to do one no, now? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave that for Alvin. But um, one of the, the major parts uh, of putting this program together is it, it, it wasn't just about us. Uh, we wanted to also really bring the community you know, in on this because we had never... Um, seen a, an exhibit for Black History Month in Rogers Park, so we, we decided we wanted to do it. We did partner with uh, Project Nyer here on uh, Morris, um, the uh, young lady that we're working with, Miriam. Mariam uh, Kaba. Kaba, yes. Uh, she's a very nice, beautiful person, uh, and she was completely on board with what we were trying to do, uh, which was uh, find an organization or community uh, program in Rogers Park where the, we can actually donate uh, art supplies to their program. And Excellent. so uh, during our search for a particular community program, uh, we found that uh, there's really not too many art programs in Rogers Park uh, with the Billy, uh, Willie B. White program up on Howard, uh, Loyola uh, Fieldhouse doesn't have one. No. Uh, the only one that really had one was uh, Potawatomi, and it was actually just a class. So, what about uh, Inside Arts? Does that still exist? You know, actually, that it, it does, uh, but this one actually came up on our radar from a friend of ours through uh, University of Chicago, and so she, you know, she let us know that they're right here in Rogers Park. Uh, we got a chance to talk to him on the phone, and um, it ended up working out pretty good for us. It ended up working out pretty good for us. You so. sound real good from that particular. Yeah, you got to stay Should closer to that microphone yeah. okay. so we can trying to follow your guys beautiful lead, voice. So. Yeah. yeah. Because you sound very good when you're close up there. All right. Um, so when you say, you, so you are working with the folks at NIA, meaning anything that is a uh, product of this uh, art exhibition will uh, serve them. Right. We're, what we're doing is we're raising funds uh, through some auctions we're going to do and some raffles uh, that we're actually going to do of our own personal art pieces. Uh, and that those proceeds will all go to uh, to their project. And so she'll actually get a cashier's check from us and she can actually distribute it any way she sees fit because they have a, a number of programs uh, that actually deal with young boys and girls. And so, Well, be careful. Mariam is a powerful force. <laughs> well, she, that's great. That's great. She we does wanted great, to, great work. We needed to get with a powerful force and 
and mm -hmm. uh, we're glad to actually have her on board uh, along with a lot of our other sponsors, uh, including you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Definitely including you guys. Uh, so. Dan, um, you mentioned self-taught artists. Yes. And uh, so why don't you tell us a little about your own art career, how you got interested, when you started drawing, uh, when you decided you were an artist. And uh, and then maybe tell us about what you draw. What, yeah, what, what your paint. medium is. Okay. Um, I've been an artist. I'm uh, 43 now. I've been an artist pretty much all my life. Uh, most of my influence uh, came from my, my mom and two siblings that also were very talented artists. Uh, I've basically just stayed with it. Uh, just kind of uh, kept in tune with you know what I was doing, my technique, developing my style, developing my technique, uh, and just you know just doodling, dealing with uh, in in. Different different mediums, whether it's uh, watercolors, oil, pastels, uh, acrylics, you name it. And uh, oil was uh, my, my, my medium of choice that I, that I decided to stick with because it allows me to be so versatile mm -hmm. uh, and it's very forgiving as well. Um, I guess my style can be considered um, surrealism, illustrated uh, paintings. Um, the subject matter I paint is about anything and everything. Uh, I can't say I have a particular genre that I actually paint about. Uh, I do a lot of jazz, I do a lot of Americana, uh, and then I do some, um, as people call, Dali-esque uh, surrealism. Ooh. Yeah, which is I, kind of those my are the favorite. paintings that are on those coffee cups that are in the general store. Those are the the, the paintings that are on <laughs> the coffee cups in the general Dali. store. You guys aren't sold out yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. Um, I paint, I've been, uh, I guess I've, I, d I discovered I was an artist when I first sold my first painting, uh, which was about 17 years ago. And so I've actually been selling paintings ever since. Uh, not enough, of course, uh, to be where I want to be, but uh, they're moving. Uh, they'll continue to move. I'll continue to paint. And uh, I'll also continue to uh, share with, you know, my community and, and, and my people that, you know, to enjoy the art uh, and really just try and put it out there. That's really what we're doing is trying to, you know, put DNA out there on the map, put ourselves on the map and also help others uh, in the same breath, if you will. Now, Jason, where'd you grow up? Um, mostly here on the north side. I'm from Chicago. Uh, we moved up here from the south side uh, about 78, and uh, I've been up here ever since, so I guess 20-something years. Where'd you go to school? Soon. Went to Sullivan High. Uh, no Sullivan. formal training. Yeah, Sullivan. Yay! Hey, uh, Sullivan is now going to be part of our ward again. Oh, really? So maybe they'll... They'll get some uh, a little tension paid. Yeah, we you know we actually thought about uh, involving a look like uh, Sullivan and Kilmer, some of the other ones, but it was just their their uh, donation programs were too big, and it was a lot of paperwork that we didn't had to go through. And we were looking for something just a little bit more simpler uh, that we can actually give the give right to the source. You That's know a I mean? significant observation. That yeah. one right there to cut to cut the red tape and the bureaucracy between us and our school children in order to give them more opportunities uh, seems like a commonsensical way to approach. It does. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe that's coming. Uh, we can cross our fingers. And toes. And toes, right. Um, and how about the, uh, the, as far as where we're located, sitting here on Glenwood Avenue, um, a number of us uh, joined with Al Goldberg years ago to help make it designated as a Glenwood Avenue Arts District. Is that a useful thing to you in your in your observation? Do you think that's what do you think about that? As far as the art district? Yeah. I think it's a great thing. I think it's uh, something that uh, gives a lot of us local artists an opportunity to, you know, showcase and expose ourselves, uh, not just to the community, but also uh, to the public in general, you yeah. know. And so uh, I've actually, remember when it first started, right. I think right here on Tui in Glue, and just on the other side of the uh, uh, red line, uh, we actually had an apartment, and they actually was allowing people to come in and out of our apartments to actually view art. So Right, the studio walk. The, the studio walk, was, right. I think that it was a part of the the early Glenwood Avenue Arts Fest was the studio walk, which I I, I think has shrunk uh, in comparison with the growth of what's on the street itself. It has. Um, you know, there's probably enough room in our in our neighborhood and year to do another studio walk separate from uh, the action on the street, which does grab everybody's attention. It but, does. But it's also kind of emphasizing art and uh, drinking beer uh, more than uh, it used to. <laughs> yeah, maybe we need to separate the two a little bit. That's when Glenwood Avenue begins to look like Bourbon Street with people walking down the street <laughs> right. with 
cups of beer freely. Dan, uh, tell us one more time. The opening is Monday night. The opening is uh, actually Monday, uh, this Monday, 2 o'clock uh, till 7 o'clock. I'll actually be on site uh, for a little bit to answer questions and greet people. Uh, and then the actual opening is the following Friday. Uh, the reception. February, the reception is February 10th, uh, and that starts at 6 o'clock. Uh, we'll have refreshments, um, some alcohol, um, hors d'oeuvres, and paintings, and raffles, and prints, and people, and so that's and Friday, a lot of fun. Friday, February 10th <laughs> what, at 6902 North Glenwood Avenue. That is correct. And what, what are you painting these days? What's your current project you're working on? Well, the uh, body of work that we're actually going to display is really going to just pay homage to some of our uh, historical figures, uh, uh, American figures uh, that have actually paved the way and that you know fought the struggle. Uh, people like Nat Turner's story, uh, Jocko, uh, The Minstrel Show, things of this nature is what we're actually going to bring. Uh, uh, to the exhibit uh, to share with the people. And these are just some of the things that have influenced us, uh, influenced the way we paint, um, what we're doing right now. So, What are you painting right now? I am painting... Uh, yeah, I know you're working on this show, but what's your... What are you currently painting? A surrealistic, uh, uh, well, historical the, figure? A scene? It's a historical figure. The piece that I'm, I've just finished up is the story of Nat Turner. Uh, because there were no actual photos of this guy, I actually had to read the story and depict from the story uh, how to put the actual painting together. So that's basically how the painting came together. It's the second time that I actually did the painting because the first one, uh, believe it or not, unfortunately was stolen. Uh, and so this is the second time I did the painting. Uh, but it looks great. Uh, I think a lot of people will uh, really enjoy the painting. Uh, there will be also an insert, so you'll be able to read and understand what the picture's talking about and why I painted well, it the way I cool. did. I actually named uh, my first son uh, after Nat Turner, Nathaniel. <laughs> and uh, I, do have, well, uh, I do have a poster from the movement newspaper that uh, Frank Chichorka, the guy who did the fist that was mm -hmm. somewhat prominent during the civil rights and even today, um, but uh, it's interesting that you said that there are no pictures of Nat Turner, uh, but I will try to find this poster for you so you can see what someone else perceived that he looked like. See, and that's the thing, is that there's sketches and drawings, but there's no actual photo because the, you know, yeah. the camera wasn't introduced then. So right. uh, the way they actually described him in the story, the, the, you know, the, the Nat Turner story, uh, that's actually what I had to go on, you know, their, their description of him in, in their that's story. That's kind of cool. So, yeah. So <laughs> it's Talk pretty about imagination at work. Yeah. So it came out pretty good, so I'm excited to actually unveil it uh, on the 10th. So it's Daniel Johnson and Al your your partner Alvin Hargrove, this is our, uh, uh, Alvin DNA Hargrove. Art Emporium, and uh, they're going to be housed in our neighbor Andy De, De La Rosa's studio for the duration of B13 the show. B13 Gallery. Yeah, B1E Gallery. B1E. Oh, see, that's what I need another there you eye go. surgery. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, and with an opening reception coming up Friday the 10th. Yep. Yeah, share something here. Well, there's some pictures here, and we're going to ask Paul maybe to shoot some so we can weave it into the video. Uh, mm -hmm. All of you people who listen regularly know that you can see earlier editions of Live from the Heartland show on youtube.com slash heartlandmedia. Yeah, and so... It won't be long till we have podcasting, too. But right now, you can see... Uh, really a whole lot of previous interviews if you go to youtube.com slash heartlandmedia or if you go to heartlandcafe.com and then the left side there's a little thing that says Heartland Media Project. You click that and they pop right up. Well, before and we leave the subject matter, um, can you give out the... Uh the um, website address. Yes, uh, the website is www.dnaartemporium.com. Uh, you can actually go to our community page and you'll get all the information regarding the uh, art fair that's coming up or the exhibit that's coming up. Uh, you can RSVP us uh, if you are interested in uh, actually coming. We actually had to RSVP everyone because uh, we have a small venue and we want to make sure that we can accommodate everybody. Uh, so if you can RSVP if you're interested, that would be great. Um, other than that, please. Although do we do stop have by. a habit of spilling out onto Glenwood Avenue That's for events. That's perfectly fine. Uh, <laughs> I just hope it's not cold for you guys if you do decide to spill out on Glenwood. Just supply some time in Chicago, almost. <laughs> That's right. Okay, thanks a lot, Dan. Let's have a Thank big you, round Katie. of applause Thank for Daniel you. Johnson. Yeah, Dan. Uh, we're going to ask Eli Sloan downtown in the studio to take a, a musical break, and we're going to get our neighborhood commentator, resident buddy, Tom Clark, to come up here and uh, give us a little information about what he sees going on in and around uh, the city. Be right back with more Live from the Heartland here on the left end of your dial, 88.7.